Podcast Barbershop Podcast. That is Barbershop Podcast, episode number 186. Coming to you live from Boxo Studio in Hamilton, Ontario. Your great source of live original music each and every Wednesday and forever on the interweb on YouTube or on iTunes. Check us out. If you like live original music, live original musicians, we are your dealer. Come and get us. Get addicted. It's good stuff. Ryan Cannon, Gary Greenland, it seems like just a little while ago I saw you, and here we are back again in the environment, the rich environment that is Barbershop Podcast. How are you doing tonight, brother? Excellent. Excellent. Same as earlier. The same as earlier? Good to know. Heavily medicated. <laughs> Everyone needs to be. I, I think there's somebody behind me. I think I'm hallucinating. So it's, it's a, you're, you're, you're balduciating, maybe. <laughs> That's it. That is Mr. Joey Balducci from Spherical Productions, the greatest and bestest booking agent in the world. And he has done us a service like I cannot tell you. He has brought in one of my faves, a true son of Hamilton. Uh, perhaps you caught him in his early days in Gorp, and then you caught him and the buzz and the fire that was Mary McCaw, and now he is merely C.A. Smith, and that is what he has embraced. That is what the world has embraced. He has left this town and traveled the world. They love what he does, and he comes back to this town, and he still loves this town. And sometimes that's a hard thing to do. Either you're stuck here forever, and then you get out, and you never come back. And then when you do come back, and you're like, oh, man, I know why I am what I am, and this town's got a big part to do with it. Mr. Smith, great to have you on. How are you doing today? Yeah, good, good. Good. So let's uh, let's talk about, uh, just for a couple minutes, about musical um, indoctrination. You kind of came yeah. from, you really didn't have a choice, did you? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, I had very uh, supportive parents. You know, my dad was in radio. Uh, Mom played a lot of records for me. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, of course, grew up, uh, I feel very fortunate to have grown up in... Uh, a time where it was quite reasonable for a person to uh, be in a band. Yeah. You know, it's I, I released my first album with Gorp in '93, so you know it's just just after Nirvana happened, mm -hmm. and you know when Nirvana came along, and you know all of a sudden it was cool to wear a lumberjack shirt yeah. and something some jeans. that you might wear every day. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, okay, great. I don't have to be stylish anymore. Mm -hmm. You can release a tape, and someone will listen to you and of course like uh hamilton was a a vibrant vibrant scene so yeah, yeah I've, uh music is less a, has, has always been less of a choice but it's uh it's um uh, it's uh, i'm very blessed to, yeah. to to have music in my life you have uh, a skill in a lot of other art forms too or, or a lot yeah. of times quite you, you'll see that across board yeah, so what yeah. are the, what are the things you like to do that could be deemed artistic uh well uh i've uh i've make a, a large source of my income right now is uh, illustration actually uh so i do quite a bit of that and uh of course i act as well which mm -hmm. uh i don't act much anymore right. uh but there has been have been times in my life where it was my job yeah you know it's uh and then getting into acting was that something you had to do or did you stumble no, into that no i was just one of the, you know one of those kids who couldn't stand still and yeah. w constantly wanted attention i'm one of four boys yeah so you know you're constantly looking for attention and uh cute only gets you so far yeah and then you yeah exactly <laughs> exactly especially when you're the eldest you get less and less you're cute. cute as time goes but, on uh yeah so i was uh sent on down to uh theater aquarius which was run by uh lou zampronia who's right. like you know local yep. hero to many uh and uh went there for many many years ended up teaching there for a while and uh so it, it's funny nowadays because in london when i do get these acting jobs i i Use a to an old Tom Waits line, which is, uh, "I'm not a I'm not an actor, but I do some acting." <laughs> Good. You know, so. Good. Yeah. And uh, music, musically speaking, what? How would you describe? Because I ask people this, people are always, "What do you do?" Oh, I'm a musician. What kind of music do you play? And 
And I say, as much as it's difficult to pigeonhole yourself, you must, mm. and you must make it brilliant. Mm. So have you developed a, a quick response when people ask you what kind of music you play? Uh, well, the music that I play, uh, I would say, is contemporary folk music. It's, uh, so it's, it's folk-y mm. sounding music, but with uh, contemporary topics. Uh, but the music that I write is quite varied, you know, because I make a lot of bespoke music for people uh, back in London. Uh, I write pop music with uh, with a, a proper rock star, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, and I write kids music as uh, as a fun thing, and that's rather new. So. Wonderful. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, my music that I do is uh, contemporary folk music. Right. And so, because music is you're like a butcher in a shop. Mu your own music is, is your passion. Yeah. It's because sometimes yeah. you get lost in the, yeah. the bricks and mortar of the business, yeah, right? Sweet. And I, I know that when uh, there was a transition, and, and I'll paraphrase sure. what kind of went down when you were with Corp. It was you started out, you were a drummer, yeah. and uh, you enjoyed drumming, and you were a drummer who wrote. And uh, eventually there was some uh, uh, a point in time when they were writing and kind of transitioning, and you felt the writing was on the wall. So you kind of branched out on your own, and from no great desire to do so you became mm. uh quite well known as a one-man band where yeah. you would carry uh the, the 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 hooks and tackle and and everything along with you uh playing a, a drum and also kind of almost delving into a performance art yeah element absolutely for it was that a conscious effort or is it truly because at a certain point people are like oh i just did it because i had to they're gonna they're not gonna believe you and say well there must have been a plan at some point i didn't have to i mean it was a crazy idea the crazy you know because i did as you said it's like you know i carried by the end of it i was 80 kilos overweight when i flew <laughs> always you know so it's that much gear but uh it started off as a crazy idea um just simply bass drum and guitar and in the end it ended up being bass drum guitar bass keyboard that i play with my left foot a keyboard, ukulele, clarinet, tap shoes, and whatever else. So yeah, it did become like performance art, but unfortunately, um, you know, as you grow, your your priorities sort of change, and you learn to. You, you, I got to know myself a little yeah. bit more, and and what I realized actually is it was distracting uh, from what I really love doing, which is writing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it's um. So I. I, I stopped the one man band gig, which it's, I, I miss aspects of it, but very little, yeah. you know, I, I certainly don't miss. You don't want to be identified as that being your, your shtick. You know? No, no. Yeah. It's, I, I was for 15 years and I can be proud of what yeah. I did and, and be, you know, because very few people uh, can do what yeah. I did. It's, it's, a either, it's so. literally a tough gig. Yeah, to yeah, very. Now, do you feel now that you are carrying the, the, the melody, and I mean, as any great acoustic guitar player mm. will, I mean, it's a percussive instrument. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're dealing with a couple different things yeah. when you're playing it. And did you feel any kind of pressure to try to emulate more of the full sound on acoustic, or did you just play as you do? No, I just, I, I mean, I just played as, yep. I, 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 as I did. I, and... I mean, the way that I ended up learning how to play, because it, it's really kind of unique and frustrating, mm -hmm. the way that I learned how to play, because I, when I started doing the one-man band, I barely played guitar, you know? And so when I started going, I actually, all those, those 15 years, I never actually learned how to play one instrument really well. So it's like, you know, I ended up playing a bunch of instruments, kind of. So it was like, you know, a, a, a unique skill, but... Um, a skill that's uh, kind of useless in a, in a lot of other yeah. things, you know. Like when once if if I tried to join a band, it yeah. but it, there it must, wouldn't really but there work. There must have been elements. Now you're playing on the mm. guitar, the same yeah. songs you played, where I got to carry what I was doing with my foot or my butt yeah. or whatever, and yeah. kind of play in there because. Uh, but I'm not so worried about that nowadays. Yeah. I'm not so worried about that nowadays because it's like uh, I'd much rather um, let the song do the talking. Yeah. You know? Well, okay. let's on that note, let's do that. All We're right. Gonna start off with a look. Let me introduce it, and you got to tell me what it is, sure. and then uh, and you, you got to tell me if you want to tell us what it's about or not. Yeah. Well, I'd be happy to. It's called "Son of a Gun." Right. Uh, it's uh, and it's about uh, friends that I've known in Hamilton over um, the years. All right, and you get to hear it right here, right now on barbershoppodcast.com. dot com. 
Martha had eyes, a deep shade of blue. Unfortunately, that's the way she felt too. She was a friend to me and to you. Admired, but always so tired. Scott wasn't sure why he felt so sad. Surely these thoughts aren't meant to be had. When the feeling started, I thought it was a fad. I guess he'll never know. Said, don't sweat, you'll beat it, I bet. And Ali said, pet, there's no need to fret. And Paul said, that's life, you'll find a new wife. said it's fine you'll get back in line dad said don't whine it's just a matter of time and grandma said why he's such a great guy Gordon was good he also was kind he wanted to see it, but he was blind. His friends and his folks couldn't see the signs. Hindsight is a son of a gun. stuff barbershop podcast i'm so glad to be able to share your music as we say every week there is a product there is a market and now thanks to the internet we can get that product to the market yeah. and then we can get people's butt out and experience live music because that's what it's about right boy you know that's the way you have to experience it and then you'll buy your cd and you'll share it with your friends i'm going to announce Right now, June is going to be bring a new fan to live music month barbershop podcast. We're going to set something up. I see the same bunch of faces, great faces, people I love, but we think here at Barbershop Podcast it would be easy to talk. You got 30 days to bring somebody to a show who's never seen live music in a club who thinks you have to spend four hundred dollars to go see somebody at a big concert and his great idea you know and it's like let's make this month and uh you know we'll see who the champion is and maybe there'll be some wicked prize back i'll start getting mm. some businesses to kick it in whoever brings the most fans in this month will be duly rewarded let's do that because they'll thank you when you go out and they say you know what that is such a great thing because it's too much of a great it's funny like you you talk about that and i was speaking about that this week uh in reference to um an act from wales actually called kate lebon and i i she finished playing a little while ago and i said i got a nice compliment for you and she said what's that i said you make me feel like a teenager not in the way that you may think Mm -hmm. and what i meant by that is that like you know um especially growing up in hamilton where it's like you know it was such a great scene i remember the first time i ever saw like bands like uh like shallow north dakota or gleet which is you know going way back or science fair or you know like truly great bands great bands that would come off the stage and maybe have a beer with you after or something like that and uh and that make you feel like 
wow, like, you know, maybe I can do this too. Yeah. Maybe I can do this too. Not only can, maybe I can do it too, it's but also maybe away. I can be great one day too. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, it's really special. And it's, it's, of course, a scene won't happen without um, people supporting it. That's true. It's true. And, and there's nothing like bringing in a new sign. We're quite, I don't know if we're, if we just want to keep it to ourselves or we're not quite sure or shy, but I'm going to do it. I think Carol, you know, I think across the street, I'm going to drag her butt out. Good. You know, and start with your neighbors because you see them all the time. <laughs> all right. We're going to give a shout out to one of our great neighbors. And that is uh, our friends at HamiltonArtists.ca. They are printers. They print stuff on stuff. In fact, they print anything on anything. They're at 1141 Main Street East, and they're committed to helping small businesses, artists, and musicians to get your name, your face, your band name on a hat, on a T-shirt, on a mouse pad, on a hoodie. You got to get out there, you know, as you can be as great as you are, but you can't be that shy. And if you're not the kind of person to stand on a soup bo- on a soapbox and tell everyone how great you are, then get a bunch of shirts to do that job for you or whatever it is. They're the people that we go to, they're the people that we think you should go to. They've got online offers. You can set up an account. You can go there in person. They've got stage wear. They've got, uh, you know, vinyl wrapping. They've got jewelry. They've got everything from uh, keychains and plaques, trophies. Great little place. And it comes down to the people. You can talk to them. Tell them what you need. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you can afford, what your budget is. They will work with you. HamiltonArtist.ca. And, of course, they're musicians. That's why they love us and we love them. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about music and we're going to talk about a CD. And you're about to take off. You're going to go out west, right? You're going to see uh, this uh, western uh, side of Canada again? I'm not, actually. Not? I'm go- I have to... Uh... I have to go back to London, actually. Oh, so you're it's... wanted everywhere in the void. I I, um, <laughs> I wish that were true. So I'm wanted back home to why, do the why, dishes. Why do they like you so, so much? Like they, they've really embraced you in, in in England, haven't they? Yeah, they've, yeah. it's it's England's been a, a good a good move for me. Do you find that Hamilton? And I I I think about this sometimes because mm. it's nothing worse than a dad who thinks you're a piece of shit who won't have the balls to say it. Sure. You know, at least uh, if you can't have a great dad, at least you should have a dad that says you suck, right? Sure. And because it gives you something to, to grind your heel in and yeah. kind of push. And I think Hamilton, I ride that one sometimes because we really do um, produce a lot of great musicians here. Yeah. Because you don't get the you don't get the adulation without working for it. And even if mm-hmm. you do, you still won't get it. And then at a certain point, you have to realize that's not important to me. I'm doing it because I believe in what I'm doing. Yeah. I like what I'm doing. Any, anyone who lasts a, a certain amount of time, you know, is is definitely got to be in it for the right reason. A- any, like, kind of musician that has lasted um, that I've ever asked advice from, which it's it's been a few, uh, all have the same advice, which is uh, just stick with it. Stick with you know, it. And and I'll add this, like, you know, you mentioned, you know, to mention Hamilton again, that it's, and I say it all the time, I've been all over the world, um, seen all sorts of fantastic people, and still uh, some of the best musicians that I know are here in Hamilton. Yeah, it's true. Oh, and it's I'd absolutely. Say it, Mark Raymond. Do you yeah, know Mark Raymond? Yes, I do. Best, best musician that I've ever known. And, it's, uh, and he's perfectly happy sharing his gifts with no one or a very few people in yeah, Hamilton, yeah. and it's, there's something magical about that as well. It's it's true. So. It's true. You can't swing a cat in this town. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to listen to a tune now called uh, Life of a Building Downtown. Uh, anything you want to tell us about this particular song? It's about uh, James Street in yeah. Hamilton. This entire album that I've done, although it was it was uh, recorded in the Steel City of England, uh, Sheffield. Sheffield. Mm-hmm. It's about uh, my experiences in Hamilton, and it's an a cappella number. Love it. All right, we're gonna hear it right here, right now. Barbershoppodcast.com. dot com. They filled me up at infancy, no time to be confused. Though hard at work, I must admit, I like being used. I've heard it told when things are old, just tear the whole thing down. But there I was, and here I am, a building downtown. As time goes by, the 
business moves on, the visits less and less. I've heard they've made another one, I start to feel a mess. I knew it was bad when people left and found a new place. I never thought they'd nail these boards across my face. When things are new and shiny, people come from all around. But look at me, I'm not a pretty building downtown. Now it's been years since I was born, seems more since I fell ill. Almost gave up and now I found hope for me still. People struggle just like me, and I'm inexpensive. They bought me care and fixed up a place where they can live. They said one man's rubbish is a treasure if it's found by a person who has a dream wants to live downtown. I hope you remember the good when the bad comes back around. And I am able to remain a building downtown. Barbershop Podcast. You got C.A. Smith who is on his way back to England very shortly but he stopped in here barbershop podcast to share his brand of music with his hometown and his fans what are you going to do live next for us uh i'm going to do a talking blues number uh now blues hmm. we always talk about this how uh, with our uh, guest last show um jake uh, you're talking about uh, jazz being the birth of the blues, being the birth of rock and roll and whatnot. Mm. Was blues a conscious thing for you? Did you ever go through a blues phase, or it's just uh, it's Never. just like having salt and pepper and cooking? Never. It's always part of it. Well, th this this is like a little bit different than regular blues because it's like talking blues. Right. So basically, it's uh, I've always loved rap music, mm -hmm. uh, but as a folk musician, it's a little bit ridiculous to do it. But talking blues is it's kind of like a rap song for right. like a. So, um, yeah, but I've never been like, I, I just don't feel like I can be authentic when yeah. I do. Some people can pull it off, yeah. but I, 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 I can't, I don't feel like I can do it. Yeah, I hear that a lot. And, and I believe the very basis of blues, it's derivative. So if, yeah. you can, if you can buy into it, you can take it and run with it. Sure. And the, and the name of this song is? Talking number one hit single blues. All right. Talking number one hit single blues right here, right now at barbershoppodcast.com. Before I die and my time is done, I'd like to have a Christmas number one. So I wrote this song and I wrote these words, now I have to win the X Factor to have it heard. So I went on down to Simon Cowell, I thought he might think I was foul. But he liked my songs and he liked me too, and I said, okay then, what do we do? He said, CA, you're a nice guy, no doubt, and I would really like to help you out. But the problem is, since 2004, people don't buy records anymore. I said, don't lie, Simon Cowell. My mom gets uh, Michael Bublé from me every year. Then I thought it might be safer to try and get myself in the newspaper. Plan a fan base and watch it grow, so people call them out and I watch my show. But it seems musicians nowadays who try to get onto the newspaper's page get hooked on drugs or just move, go mad or move into this place that they call rehab. So I found a dealer to sell me some and I discovered that drugs are so much fun. It's true. So when rehab called to have me enrolled, I ignored the call if the truth be told. I 
I was doing some shopping at the 7-Eleven when God himself descended from heaven. He said, I want you to write a book praising me and my good looks. So I did it. I worked real hard. I wrote the thing down and I brought the book on into town. Showed it around to the folks I knew and the popularity of it grew. Made a lot of money too. So people come now from here and there to sing my songs or to say a prayer. And I haven't seen God since that night, so I sure do hope that I got it right. Got to love it each and every week on barbershoppodcast.com. 186 episodes. You can catch us every week, every Wednesday, usually sometime between 8 and 9 on Twitch TV. That is, uh, if you're watching it right now, uh, live, we uh, welcome you. There's a chat. You can ask questions. That is uh, twitch.tv slash podcastbarber, podcastbarber, also being our Twitter handle at podcastbarber. Check us out on uh, YouTube or iTunes. If you work the line and you uh, got a long 12-hour grindy shift, pop it in. You know, I don't know how many hours. Boy. Like even that one hour, I would say, yeah, 200 hours at least. Yeah, anyway, sure. 200 hours of live original music and fascinating banter from the inside of the creative mind that makes it happen. Got to love it. <laughs> now, let's talk about the recording process. Sure. Do, you, uh, um, do you find it easy to kind of produce what you have in your head or is it a torturous thing that you're never quite happy with that when i was young yes it was difficult and torturous and uh nowadays it's i just kind of have to be patient and wait for it to come yeah. it's it's more and more nowadays it's uh the the songs kind of come out almost fully formed mm. um yeah, and uh, you know, but it's just from practice. Yeah, you know? I wrote my first song like twenty five years ago. Wow. So, is there are you are you kind of spotty with your songwriting, or are you steady Eddie Workman well, Mike? What's I'm, your? I'm pretty steady nowadays. Yeah. You know, my my personal you have songs, to be right. Yeah, well, I mean, my personal songs that I write uh, are a little more. Um, Spor sporadic, mm -hmm. um, but because I write for other people and stuff like that. And does that happen? Do you consciously say, I'm writing for this person, or does the song come out and go, oh, that's for this, or that's well, for this? Well, when they come out, th those are usually the ones for me. When I write for other people, it's 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 more about fiddling about yeah. and uh, and just going... I've got to do this, and then and then just writing it down. I find it a lot easier to, uh, to, to write for other people because I don't have to... Own, own, own the words yes. in, in a weird kind of way, even though I'm, I'm writing them. I so okay. get that. Yeah. All right, we're going to play another song. I don't know. I've lost my piece of paper because I like shuffling <laughs> so much. I don't know. Let's just play it, Gary, right here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. You got it. I got it. Gary's good stuff. We're all going to die. It's true. It is true. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I saw it. <laughs> it's actually a positive it's, song. It's, it's this a thing. I, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Barbershoppodcast.com. <laughs>
Music is community. This is the sort of thing that, uh, be it uh, a church or it be a, any kind of procession, or if you're playing for yourself, you're still kind of evoking spirits and delivering it to other people, right? And do you find, uh, and I desperately try to constantly pump air into music as a, something important. Sure. I feel I feel it's it's undermined and it's overlooked. I feel that people take it incredibly for granted. Uh, they don't realize the benefits that it has. Mm. I liken it to food, whole food, real food versus processed food, yeah, where sure. the convenience or the stackability sure. takes precedence over what it does, let alone mm. the, the cultural aspect of breaking bread together mm. with people you love. Do you find yourself disenfranchised with this business or do, or no. do you not let the business I mean, the, get in the way? But, well, the business is kind of irrelevant. It's uh, which has gotten me into. Tr I've said that before, actually, it, and it got me into a bit of trouble. Where where I I had a, a it was very nice. You know, a friend brought me out to to meet all of these record executives because I just released a, a popular video and you know was trying to get me to know people. And they were talking about the state of the music industry and stuff. And I said, well, with all due respect, what you guys do is really kind of irrelevant. Because it's, you know, like we were talking about like um, earlier about how if you're going to be in it for any amount of time, you're going to be doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. So it's music will live on and music is magical and special, it's like you said. It's self-cleaning. <laughs> yeah, you know, look, London Bridge is falling down. That's, that's a song, you know, that's lasted however long it's yeah. been, you know, 300 years. And there's songs that have lasted even longer than that. And, um, you know, we I think we all kind of take... Grant, music for granted to a point, but also you know you have things like music therapy. There's a fascinating documentary that uh, that I saw called Alive Inside, where they take. Have you seen this? Yes, it just blew me away it, too. I was in and tears people, the whole time. These people were catatonic. They yeah. actually had like very few, if any, reactions to anything, and yeah. then they put earbuds on with music from their life. Their era. It yeah, couldn't sure. be just any music. Yeah, yeah. It's imprinted. Yeah. And all of a sudden. It was like turning the color on. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know, so, so I mean, in that way, it's like, you know, I think that we're, you know, as a society, we're starting to yes, understand it a little to. bit, you know, but, um, you know, certainly like, you know, knowing what goes on in schools nowadays mm -hmm. and stuff like that, like that's really disappointing. Like when I was a kid, uh, we had music class three times a week, Yeah. three times a week. And, and that was from like elementary school on up yep. to 
uh, you know, on up to, to high school when, when then they gave you a choice whether you wanted to take music or not. Hardcore, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's like, you know, that's, that's I, I think, really disappointing. <laughs> I think there was too many Mohawk jazz grads. I think, that were <laughs> <laughs> reapplying Perhaps. for Teacher's College. <laughs> they were like, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Can't Perhaps. be doing this. <laughs> All right. Barbershop Podcast, your source of real live original music. You're going to give us another taste of yeah. real live. What uh, have you got in store for us now? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'll play a God is Not My Friend. God is Not My Friend. I like the way that sounds. All right. You're going to hear it right here, right now. Barbershoppodcast.com. God is not my friend. I don't know what he is nothing but trouble. He borrows more than I can lend. And then he asked for double He never writes an IOU Just trust him till your days are through I get no payback in the end Cause God is not my friend God acts in spite He'll allege that he is perfect His actions aren't so nice He will claim they're all a test He acts like such a hypocrite he acts like such a hypocrite when making little children sick. Praises majesty and might, cause God acts in spite. out to make you mad he teases and he taunts you know that he will just laugh when he gives you what he wants you know he's out there seeking fame when people kill in his name i say it and i'm sad god is out to make you mad god is jealous and weak he will do things to confuse you i never hear him speak to hurt you His only voice is human sound And if I'm wrong Then strike me down His agenda is incomplete God is jealous and weak Get no payback in the end Cause God is not my friend Lovely a sentiment that you can say and that you can <laughs> sing. And it's a great thing about being an artist, you know, unless you're in Vladimir Putin's Russia or, you know, the wrong place in the wrong time. But we are fortunate because uh, I've always said that's one of the main reasons for this show is that uh, musicians in general have a great ability to well, quote. Well, may I quote Bob, may I quote Bob Dylan? Sure. You can kill a person with kindness as well. That's true. You know, so that's what I always think when I when I play that song because it's like you know it's not a sentiment that everyone shares. Yeah. Uh, but as you said, we're we're allowed to speak our minds yeah. and uh, um, and you're allowed to disagree with me. Yeah. No, I agree with you one thousand percent. And I just find as I started this show as very much an outsider mm -hmm. and reveled in the outsideness and then realized there's way more of us on the outside than there are mm -hmm. those in the inside. Yeah. And then, then it's almost like uh, Joseph Stalin saying there's a there's a quality to quantity, you mm -hmm. know, and it's all its own. And there's also a great power in being disenfranchised. Oh. And it's just getting Absolutely. together. Absolutely. You know, combining. And we spoke of that right off the bat, mm -hmm. where the power of focusing those energies. Yeah. And it comes quite quickly. Any kind of revolution, uh, it may seem like it was a flashpoint in time, but that was a long time simmering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, before yeah, it's it like, happens. I think that, well, I mean, certainly there are, places all over the world that uh that are on the brink of it or in the yeah. process of it at the moment and uh you know they're exciting and scary times you yeah know, for, I, I i couldn't agree more you know, i was i was in london for the riots you know it's like you know there's 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 something happening over there that's uh um like their music and their fashion, it seems to be about a year and a half ahead of them, and we get a whiff of it over yeah, here. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's it it is one of those things, you know. That it's uh, you know, if you're gonna work in fashion anyway, it's uh, well, if you're gonna work in fashion, there's only four places you can really work, you know, Milan. New York, London, Milan, and or Paris, mm -hmm. and music. I mean, 
anybody who travels will eventually and does well will eventually end up in London. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's 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 a big city that yeah. that it, a lot of people. What's fancy the population? Going. Is it twelve million? Seven million. Seven million. Seven. Okay. Seven million. Yeah, so it's cool. not. It's yeah. it's only about two times as big as Toronto. But still, it's but, like concentrated because it's a yeah. world, right? It's, and do you feel like? I would think the creativity kind of like would run through you. Like people talk about New York. When yeah. they go to New York, there's an experience that's very, yeah. very uniquely New York. Yeah. Were you have any expectations when you first went? And did it meet those expectations or was it? I had expectations that weren't met, but it's because I'd never been there before. You know, I, I really didn't know what to expect. And, and I mean, once I got there, I was I was quite surprised. And it's like I... I when I got there, I kind of very quickly realized that if if I knew that it was actually a possibility um, to go and live and work in London, and it was easy as it ended up being for me to do that, uh, I probably would have done it a few years yeah. earlier. Yeah. But but you know, it's I don't know if those few years earlier I would have been ready. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's the city's buzzing, and if you want, it's 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 literally a place where you can. It's a city where you can get anything. Get anything you want, and four people. in the morning you can get any kind of food you want. It's it's you, you might have to travel a bit, but it's and people come from every walk every of life. Every part of the world, yeah, it's every very walk of life a culturally of. accepting city. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's it's quite a you know. Very few people, very few places in the world that are that are actually like that. I think there are a lot of places of yeah. uh, places that champion themselves as that. It's but. tough. I heard it's, a, it's like Toronto. It's getting mm. ridiculously expensive, and it's hard for artists to to, to survive and find a place to live. It's absolutely ridiculous how expensive yeah. it is it's uh it's getting uh it very much like toronto but yeah. even more extreme because yeah. england's more expensive yeah you know um you know f to get a house is uh it's, you know you're looking at around prospect right? yeah well you, you you know you gotta get together around eight hundred thousand uh dollars for and that's not even that's for like a apartment uh, flat, yeah. yeah. Um, but this, you know, the disenfranchised people and, you know, revolution and all this stuff, this is where this is coming from when, yeah. when people are, are are striving to get to the middle class because the class system is very much in, intact in England. You know, like, they, like people love it. Yeah. You know, like, who is the queen? Yeah. Like, I love the queen yeah. and everything. Like, she's doing a job that yeah. people want to do. But who is she really? We yeah. know better now. Is she, is she ordained by God? No, yeah. she's a rich lady. You know, and and the class system, it's like, it's very much in intact yeah. there She's and our celebrated. Rich lady. Yeah, she is. She is. <laughs> Every country yeah. wants that, though, right? You need to have your your, your something on the hood of your car yeah. that says, "Hey, I've arrived." Yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I certainly have different thoughts about it mm -hmm. now that I. I live in England. You don't you know? seem like you carry any bitterness with you, though, at all whatsoever. You don't seem like a very angry man for a folky. I'm not. I'm not angry, but it's. I think that I, I've I've given a great deal of thought towards empathy mm -hmm. as over the last few years, and what I've figured out. And I mean, this this at the risk of s sounding condescending is, uh, you know, this is just something that I had to figure out is that. Um, Empathy means re not only relating to the people that are down and out and doing worse than you, but it's also relating to the people that are doing better than you yes. and the people that you agree with and the people you disagree with and the people you like and the people mm -hmm. you don't like. Empathy is it, it, it's, it's, for, it's for everyone, <laughs> yeah. really, tr truly trying to understand even the most awful people. You know, so it's it's when you... When you empathize, you know, it's, it's, I get sad more than I get angry. You know, like if, if I, you know, like my wife said the other day, cause we, we speak about this a lot and she goes, you know, gosh, how do politicians sleep at night? She'd never thought about that. And it's like, you know, that could make yeah. some, and make some people very angry when, when politicians are just interested in a career as opposed and to helping almost people. Almost to the point where someone like Bernie Sanders is ridiculed as a as a freakazoid. I love he's, him. He's isn't he wonderful? Like 30, 40 years being consistent and wonderful, and he's still viewed as a weirdo. That there's no way that could work. And it's and and you shake your head and think you really have to surrender yeah. all of those 
things to enter that walk of life. For and, me to be a politician, do I have to surrender? Well, it, it's he's a rare breed, and this is the revolution that we're talking it's, about. It's true, and you it know? does. It, and it won't be on television, and yeah. the it's it. Everyone's being exposed yeah, yeah. at the same time, yeah, it's, it's, and you're not putting that cat bat in the and, bag. And and also, you know, another thing, when it, if or when, which is a very good chance that the next president is going to be Donald Trump, yeah. that revolution will come mighty quick, very very on quickly. the heels. Because, which that's you know very you know I hope that yeah. that's not the case i hope it can be a, a peaceful I just, I, and I, I think for people like us who have been f- saying these for years to have someone who is like your your atypical like i mean your prototypical hmm. privileged white man and your prototypical establishment looks good on paper candidate hmm. in hillary and to the people who aren't actually walking in the street, mm. that seems like your best bet. Completely ignorant that how detached and how discontented mm. the rest of the nation is with that, that they're well, willing to look at us as this old Jewish grandfather and and believe something again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, you know, and again, it's empathy. Yeah. It's empathy, you know, like Bernie Sanders is a person who can mm. empathize. Yeah. Now, even, you know, and Donald Trump. Now, okay, how can I empathize with John, Donald Trump? Yeah. I do. He's 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 a rich guy. He's a rich guy who really just doesn't know any better. No, he's insecure. That's it's, his environment. It's rarefied as it so, is. So is you know it, he's and not why, blameless. And why do half the nation support that? Instead of doing memes and ridiculing them as Cro Magnum yeah. knuckle draggers, why don't you ask yourself why is half the nation willing to do this? Mm. What infuriates them to such an extent? that they would yeah. be willing to do this. Yeah. And there's a huge failure on the left where there's this complacency Enormous. where, you know, it's like I feel justified mm. that I can pass judgment and I know what I think is right and there's an end in mm. kind of learning or reaching or yeah, empathizing yeah, yeah. at that point. And I really think that there probably has to be a bit of a house cleaning before there's the rebirth. You need the forest fire to have the... I hope it doesn't come to that. I don't mean a little I, worldwide I, Armageddon, but I, 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 I genuinely hope it doesn't come to that. But but I fear uh, that that may be what happens if yeah. things keep going like they do. It's 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 one reason never if you're. De- ever considered suicide and you're full of depression things change overnight you don't know like don't put your lot in the fact that there's no point in trying and there's no future because who would if i would have told you this scenario a year and a half ago you would have said no way even yeah. justin trudeau he was like people were laughing oh yeah rich boy blah, blah, blah. it's like no and i said you know myself i said if he combines the kind of moxie of his father mm-hmm. and a realization that you have to accommodate so many walks of life in this country and not seem like you're ingenuine. Mm. And you're going to annoy everyone from every walk of life who expects you to be laser beam focused on their interests because, in fact, you have to spread it out. Yeah. But yeah, as long absolutely. as you're genuine on those fronts, like history will judge him. Mm. But it's like, you know, good on him. Yeah. Good on him that he's reflected that this country... Uh, you know, values those sort of things, yeah, and I and I, for one, as a Canadian, appreciate that we are respected around the world. I, it's we we really are, you know. It's uh, my passport that I have is uh, has helped me, and 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 then some. You know, it's really you can walk into a lot of countries and have a Canadian passport. They won't even ask what you're doing. Yeah, just go ahead. They're not interested in staying in our country. It's yeah. uh. You know, they come from a great one themselves, and I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be Canadian, well, and and uh, and uh, uh, and, what, and from uh, Hamilton. Hamiltonian. And it's the first true. thing that that usually people know about me. And there's a Hamilton in almost every country. You know, it's one of those yeah, names it seems where a lot it's like you can find that they're here, there, and they're everywhere. Yeah, and they all they are they're all <laughs> they're all a little bit sketchy, from what I understand. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, all right. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, a song off of your disc called Best I Could Be, which is what you are, which we all strive to be. Anything in particular be. about this song you want to tell us? Uh, it's uh, just about um, 
Oh, I th- I'll let the song speak for itself. That's what I'd love mm. to hear. Barbershoppodcast.com. Hey! <laughs> Coming in. You, you caught us. <laughs> Security. <laughs> Everyone should enjoy film and movies and experiences. And music is probably, you know, you think about it, there's music in films, right? There's yeah. music in everything. When we whistle to ourselves, there's a, I can't see them ever not putting, I mean, they may stop putting AM, FM radios in cars, but they'll, they'll always be a, a link. Yeah. I think people yeah. kind of need it as an augmentation to their heartbeat. And I'm so glad you came in because you added a big part of that and dimension. Uh, really enjoyed the intelligence, the foresight, the insight that you bring to it. I wish you the very best of luck uh, you in so your much. career. Uh, keep representing Hamilton. Will and do. we will share the show. You will share the show. Who knows on next week? I know who's on next week. Check us out. 
barbershoppodcast.com. Thanks. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Cheers.